this has happened way faster than I could ever imagine. And when we talked about, when we talked about this would never happen in the Midwest, Iowa, boom, this week. Oh, oh. No more, no more trail cameras on public. And uh, what's your initial knee jerk reaction? Because in, this was not a new bill. Like Kentucky was introducing it as a new bill. Kansas introduced it as a new bill. They updated an existing law to do boom, quick, swift decision. Yeah, I think that I think that we had talked about Iowa specifically on the Kansas piece of legislation um, about them being probably next. It, well, n- not next, but. I, I don't know. At some point, I remember doing a specific piece of content. Maybe it was a a, a video on the stance of BNC and, and Pope and Young on their stance of fair chase and cell cameras. And at some point, we were talking about states that had legislation in place, but it was very gray. It mm. was like communicated as the aid, the aid of electronic devices tied to the whereabouts of game or actively hunting, some something along those lines. And I, I made the comment of it would be better to be to make it black and white. And I think that's kind of where we're sitting at right now with the situation in Iowa. Like they've made a clear stance that cellular cameras or trail cameras fall in fall in the place of those electronics in the knowabouts of of game, of big game. Um it's still it I don't know. Even though it was already in place and they've made it more black and white, like it still feels slimy. Mm. And and maybe that's because like we're so tied to some of the folks on the ground in Iowa and they are like up in arms about the situation. Um, so I don't know if that ties into my personal perspective or not, but um, I, yeah, a handful of years ago, we said, I maybe I said, we said, Brand said that it would never happen east of the Mississippi. It would never happen in the Midwest because of deer hunting. Well, it's because still not the east. culture. Yeah, it's still not east of Mississippi. Well, yeah, technically it's still not east yeah. of the Mississippi, but it's it it is Greece, becoming more Greece. widespread. Yeah. It's becoming more widespread through the Midwest. And uh, you know, the Kentucky thing has been talked about. So I think that we probably will see it east of the Mississippi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so basically they updated updated the law that you can't leave anything overnight other than a tree stand. So that includes trail cameras. And so that was one thing. And we had a, a, a piece of information sent to us. And basically, the rule has been clarified. There is a lot of information in the hunting rigs on what hunters can use and set set out certain things, blinds, decoys, tree stands, et cetera. And trail cameras were added as the technology. And use, use became more common. We went through the regs book and gathered all those restrictions and put them in one section to try to make it easier to find and understand for our hunters. Trail cameras sending pics to cell phones are considered an extension of the cell phone and illegal when used to assist in the hunt. Just like a CB, mobile transmitter, drones, etc. Hunters may use a trail camera on public land but not but cannot leave it there or use it while actively hunting. So there's like we were chatting this morning how that reads cell cameras would be illegal on private as well if you're Stay using wide. it for the pursuit of an animal that's right super hard to super hard to govern and and everything else because people are going to make the security thing and but I, man it's crazy we're we're living in 1985 <laughs> the book- yeah it's uh i i don't yeah i mean I'm not sure what to to, re- to really say about it like we were talking this morning and or maybe it was yesterday because i think some of that news is a couple of days old now, but yep. um, I think yesterday morning we were talking about it at the office, Justin and Cameron and I, and somebody made the comment like, well, that'll never happen in private. And I'm like, it's already happened in Utah. And True. like two to, and a couple within 24 hours, you got an official statement or response from the Iowa DNR claiming that like the way that that reads, they are illegal if you're hunting on private ground. Mm-hmm. And I like the push is, Everyone's up in arms and pushing or talking about the chatter is about public land. Like that's been the chatter that I've read. Absolutely. You know, people texting me. That's, that is the focus, but in the broad picture of what is going on, you can't use them on private ground. To assist in killing the deer in real time. Yeah. Or actively or actively hunting. So like if you have, so so what's what's considered actively hunting, like if you get a, you have your security camera up, right? And you get a picture of a deer four days earlier. And then you go hunt and kill that deer. Like when you sign that Boone and Crockett affidavit, 
is there like an updated question there? And like, what's the statute of limitations? Can't, I, I don't know. I don't know either. I'm just asking. I, I've never shot a booner to have to sign the affidavit. So, but I don't know. I mean, there is some, I guess it's open to some interpretation, but to me, actively hunting is if you have a weapon and you're in the field within legal shooting hours, like to me, that's actively hunting. Mm. Like, I don't, do you, do you have to be on a specific deer to be actively hunting? Fair. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's going to have to be additional clarification. And I think that it's going to be really hard to govern. And I think there's just a lot of gray area, which uh, maybe their intent, maybe not. I don't know, but that's yeah. the that's the the response that a lot of folks get like i we were talking with mike rex um who is a non-state employee on the uh wildlife council here in ohio and and this is true across any state in america right like specifically tied to the dnr or wildlife councils or recreational officer officers or whatever that entity um however that entity is set up but they are so understaffed what good are more regulations if they can't be enforced like who's walking around the woods enforcing these regulations writing tickets and then you know the comment that we had going on that text thread is how are they going to prove that a trail camera is left overnight and it's not it doesn't read 24 hours it reads overnight is the way that the way that mm -hmm. reads. So for someone to physically be able to prove that they have to basically open up and touch and look at private property placed on public ground, which the information that we got is they can't do that without some type of warrant. But I don't think DNR officers in a lot of states need warrants. Well, that's, that's a, that's a valid point too. I don't think that they do. Yeah, that's true. Which they could just take a picture of it with the timestamp and then take a picture of it over, you know, the next morning timestamp. And then, yeah, it, it just, it opens up a can of worms that I'll be curious to see how it really uh, unfolds. And then, uh, like some of the guys that hunted Kansas this year on public ground, like there's still cameras everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, there's still going to be cameras everywhere on Iowa. And the, I, I, I'll be very curious to see what happens over the long period of time, like with the Kansas, for example, because people are making the argument, well, they're just going to kill the first solid deer that they see. And I'll be curious if the age structure or quality of hunting increases or decreases three, four years down the road with these things being implemented and enforced. I have my perspective, but I want to hear yours first. Um, kind of twofold question here. What do you think the effect is uh, long-term on trophy class? not even long term uh i guess segment that into the next two years five to ten years and then long term in iowa and then also like what is that going to do not only for like the point creep situation that's inherently happening but think about what does it do for all the guys that are in the draw this year planning to hunt public land dude <laughs> like are they getting the bone or what man like, yeah what's your perspective on some of that stuff my gut feeling is actually the age class is going to increase. I think so. Short term or long term? I think a long term, like in the scope of five years. I don't know. I don't even know if it'll be extremely measurable for the first year or two. Um, but I think long term, I actually think the age class might get better. Um, not that I'm in favor of this, but I think that's what could po possibly happen. And if if you're drawing an Iowa tag in like two weeks and you're planning on public and have cameras, I feel bad for you. I mean, that. I mean, whether we really asked it or not, like it's a big part of, and the guy that, you know, waited five or six years and he wants to, I'm sure he has a goal, right? He has a type of deer that he wants to hunt and time is precious. You're taking a week off of work. You're driving to a different state, maybe multiple states away. I do feel bad for those guys. Um, but I, I do think it's long-term, like I'm anti, I'm anti over legislation of everything. Like I, that's, that's me as a person, but I'll, I think the age structure will get a little bit better. I really do. Um, what do you think? I think that that will be the case for the next two to three years. I think that um, without knowing what the top end in that specific area is, I do think guys are going to kill the first respectable deer um, that they see. I mean, let's face it, like most non-residents coming going out of state, like 
they have a, generally speaking, they have a window that they're hunting, typically seven days. And I think there's going to be a lot of 130 to 150 inch deer get killed. And in Iowa, those are three and four year olds. And there will be the top end deer now, you know, there, there'll still be some big deer get killed. Like, don't get me wrong, but I think that there's going to be a gap where those three and four year olds that are, you know, 130, 140, 150 inch type deer are going to get killed over the next couple handful of years, which is going to inherently decrease the upper end bucks over a longer term. That's my, that's my opinion on it. I think a lot of them are going to kill those deer regardless though. And so maybe. it's going to be harder to kill those maybe. deer. It could be, maybe. I mean, I, who, yeah, we don't, who knows? Right. We don't, we don't know. I mean, it's all, it's all a, opinion based, but, um, I think the, the, what's it going to do with the point situation? Are they, are there going to be people that drop out because of it? Because this is also tied to the, the non-resident party hunting loophole. Yeah. Um, where guys could go buy, you know, $450 tag, a doe, essentially a doe tag and kill a buck with a, you know, party hunting that got closed down. Yeah. Like, are those guys going to now stack up points to, to archery hunt? I mean, if they're only gun hunters, they're still going to be forced to buy points to, to gun hunt it. Right. Um, but what, like, what does that do to the point creep situation? It's going to make it worse. Um, I think that some of those people that have been hunting their farms every year through this loophole are going to probably leave the state of Iowa, uh, go buy a farm in a different state. I think that's probably going to happen. And, but then it's like, to me, it just continues to solidify that I will continue to be the best state in the country for hunting whitetails. Like if, if the line gets longer, I still think it's going to improve. I mean, that's, that's the reality of it. And I, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's the unknown right now, but I think those are all fair conclusions or hypotheses of what will happen. And I do think there'll probably be a departure of some large landowners in Iowa and there might be more people that move to Iowa. Like some of those guys that are 55, 65, they own their business. They have a big track. Well, they're going to start working remote from their property and claim residence. I think that'll probably happen a lot too, which maybe is good for the state, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, th- yeah. I mean, to, to your point, it's all hypotheses at, at, at this point. Uh, I'm interested to see what happens like in the, in the land situation, like does it drive the price of leases up or more people going to start hunting with outfitters to get on private because they have less faith in the, the process of hunting public land without the aid of trail cameras. It's hard to say, but the reality of it is, is you're right. Iowa's going to remain in Iowa and there's only a handful of States that give you that opportunity to kill those types of deer. What I feel bad for is the states like Indiana, the states like Ohio. Like, how much more, more. non-resident pressure are are states like that going to get because they have over-the-counter tags? Yeah, I have can. to. I have to think like we're going to absorb the the overflow um, from the Iowa situation. That's a good point. Yeah, I think a lot of people will end up going to some some different states that are easier to draw, and it's it's ever it's ever changing. It's like you wouldn't have. Uh, a week ago, I would never guess that this was going to happen just because legislation season was over and it was the, you know, like a good legislation. And, and, you know, like I'm sure there's people in Iowa that are very pro for these changes. And then we know some people that are very upset with it. And I think that's, can't change it now. I mean, it's, it's law and the, the ability to go back and change the law is a lot harder than getting a new bill introduced. Yeah. Yeah. It's nuts. It's crazy. A lot, it feels like this. A lot of this has happened really fast in the last couple of years. Um, it has, yeah, yeah. So I'll be curious once again. It's just like, what is what is five years from here from now look? And then it's uh, obviously we sell cameras for a living, right? <laughs> like it's not. This isn't really fun right. news. Really fun news to hear. Like, hey, we're banning. Uh, we're banning uh, all cameras from public. Okay, well, there's there goes some customer base. And if you uh, use a cell camera. That's also illegal if you're using a pursuit of hunt. That's not super fun to hear either. Um, there are about we'll, to be security cameras real, real quick. <laughs> everything will be updated to uh, uh, exit a security camera. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just be, it, it's, it's just really fascinating. And it's, uh, you can only roll with the punches. I, and it's it's still, it's crazy to me that like amongst tra- trail camera manufacturers, there's been zero dialogue <laughs> with any other manufacturer. <laughs> like we, we are the worst product category in this space to uh to go up to bat for ourselves it's it's 
And maybe we're not cool enough to be involved in some of those conversations, uh, but I take a heavy bet that they have not even existed at all. Like you would think that. No, no I, I would agree with you 100%. We're the only company in that space with any type of media present. Like, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's else, disgusting yeah. is what it is. Yeah, it's like some of these, some of these other main, like everyone could pull together and and uh, throw whatever they could afford to get some form of presence and probably squash a lot of this stuff, but not, none of that has been initiated. And uh, I don't really feel like it's our place to do it, honestly. No, I don't. I, I there has been, I mean, I think that we're doing our part in using the media platforms that we've built to engage and maybe give our perspective and maybe help educate or enlighten people on the different situations. Um, regardless of how you look at that, like that those are resources being spent. Um, but there needs to be one of the big conglomerates or bigger brands step in and create some type of coalition or alliance and help fight some of the stuff. And to your point, it's not happening. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy to me because every other form of industry has some presence and i feel like it's just like what what can we make right now <laughs> and who cares about next year it's, it's what it feels like and obviously it's like we're talking about it and at least initiating the conversation 